Welcome to Headlights. I'm Sam Space 81. With anger in his voice, told me he was not <laughs> even going to talk to me. Let's do it again. <laughs> she took it and painted the car in his in his dad's barn. Sam Space 81. I'm here in San Antonio, Texas, with Dr. Patrick McDaniel, checking out his 68 Buick Wildcat. Now, this Wildcat has a special story. And this one it. was like that. It was a uh, management company car. Because growing up, my grandparents had a 68 Wildcat, but a four-door. We were, they were testing the car on an oval track. And back in the day, I mean, this was my this was my everyday car for college. That's what I bought it. It is. Well, and this one is too. This motor, I can't say for other 430s, but this motor runs way better than either one of those cars. Sam Space 81 Headlights features folks and their rides. Any cool backstories, test drives, and we just hang out and talk cars. So sit back and enjoy the episode. Be sure to watch it through. I've got all Let's kinds of cool stuff you. throughout it. Patrick, down the road, this 68 Wildcat. Uh, how long has it been since you've had her out? I smell the, the gas got a little aged too. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Well, that's a distinctive smell. Yeah, it was sitting up. Uh, I don't know, probably about a year now. I'd moved into this house, and so the last time I'd driven it was when I uh, moved and had parked it in the in the garage, started periodically, but really haven't been been driving it much. Do it good to get out and stretch its legs a little bit. take a little bit for it to warm up. It's like... Yeah, I'm not sure what's in the motor, but its whole life it's been... Uh, it's slow to warm up and... Whoa. Also, in this Texas heat, it has a tendency to overheat, too, so <laughs> it's sort of, it likes pristine weather, and that's about it. Around 83, I was up in Fredericksburg with my great-grandparents, and uh, we passed this used car lot that had the car sitting there, and it looked pretty rough at the time, and... Uh, and so we had stopped by because growing up, my grandparents had a 68 Wildcat, but a four door. And I'd never seen a car like it. So I pulled over, asked the guy that owned the, the lot about it. And he, with anger in his voice, told me he was not even gonna talk to me about the car, that he had had the car sold four times and the owner backed out every time. And uh, he said, if I really wanted to talk about the car I need to go see the owner <clears throat> so I drove over there and uh, he was a retired engineer he had worked uh, in the Frederick uh, refrigeration portion of GM and he said that it was a special car and that's why I wouldn't sell it to just anybody because he, he did not want the car to be you know tore up hot rotted you know modified in any way and so after talking to him, uh, it's like he agreed to sell it to me, and so I've owned the car now for about 35 years. And while they were still alive, which was about 15, 16 years after I purchased it, every summer I would drive up, take him and his wife for a little drive around Fredericksburg, uh, and you know eventually they passed away, uh, but I've tried to to maintain the car it's not a show car by any means um but it's just it's a driver it's a survivor uh and the story that he told me uh and things have lined up with this throughout the years 
they it was considered a brass hat car so it was going to be a management uh, company car for a few months but they put a lot of things on the car that some were available but very rare other things were just not available and so they would take it from him periodically run tests on it that kind of thing i think it's road and track or motor trend uh had an article about the 430 when it came out because it, it replaced the uh old buick nail head that they had been building since the mid 50s oh yeah i love the old nail head yeah great old uh, hot rod motor they just didn't breathe very well and so this was buick's answer to it and it's like they rated it very well uh but performance wise it was not living up to what they wanted they really wanted more of a uh, more of a hot rod motor out of it and so that's part of what they were doing here is by modifying the the motor and the transmission was to see okay how you know what can we do in the future with this 430 unfortunately uh, they really didn't do much to it because then all of a sudden you had uh, issues with the EPA. Buddy and I, actually, it's the, when I got it, it was in really rough shape. And it's like, we actually took it and painted the car in his, in his dad's barn. And uh, so that was 34, 35 years ago. So now that that paint job, which was far from professional is quite worn <laughs> that it doesn't burn oil it's like because uh, a standard you know cast iron block from that time period that many miles on it that car, it's like it it should have been you know burning oil and having all kinds of problems right now sure what are the miles on it? It's rolled over once. Let's it's have a look. Showing 51, so 151. Wow. <clears throat> Which in today's standards doesn't sound like a lot, but those motors, you know, usually at about 100,000 miles, you're rebuilding them. You're at least ready for rings, a head job, you yeah. know, valves. And now I know the transmission when they rebuilt the trans uh because initially it's you know they said yeah it's a gm 400 no big deal and uh then they called me back in and they're like we got to retalk this and and they said you and they told me straight up they said you told us this transmission hasn't been rebuilt and so i called mcgee and i said hey i'm at the trans shop they're saying this transmission's been rebuilt and he said, no, it has not been rebuilt. And see this 846? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. That's, that was the uh, GM's code for this particular car. Oh, interesting. So it was car 846. I'll use that and mention that. Oh. And, and so, uh, and McGee said, he goes, no, it's never been rebuilt. He goes, it's the way they gave me the car. And he goes, I'm not saying that it's stock, but he goes, it is factory. And uh, and so they said, well, you know, this is all custom work. It's the uh, valve body's been drilled out, and they said, in ways that we haven't seen before. And they said the torque converter is high stall, and it's been hand brazed around it as if they were expecting a lot of torque out of this motor. Interesting and they said well rebuild it exactly the way it was but you know now it's going to double the cost because this is all custom work and some of it we've got to send off they have done um and so i went ahead and you know had them rebuild it the way that it came um and so they even recommended it they said you know we're not sure why they did it and so if they did this to the trans, we don't know what they've done to the motor. And 
It's like there may be real good reason for it being set up like this. And you could see by by what they ended up doing with the 455 that they were going for more torque. Mm -hmm. So it, it made sense. running better now that it's warmed up smoothing out she's ready for some fresh gas I think that thanks for watching sam space 81 headlights the show about folks and their cool rides stay tuned for the next episode you never know who i'm going to feature or what i'm going to show classic cars trucks or even floats or flights Streamline shape.